In this video, we're going to discuss how we can get access to the Linux environment variables in C. Now, in this particular video, we're going to focus on read-only access. We're not going to talk about updating them yet. We'll do that in another video. Now, the first mechanism we'll use is the get environment function, and that's going to allow us to access individual environment variables. Now, as a reminder, Linux keeps variables in its environment that you can access. So here I am sitting at the shell prompt, and I could say echo user to get my username or echo term to get what terminal I'm using. I can get a list of all the currently set environment variables with the env command. And so you can see that there's all these different things that are, are set. And some of these, I don't have any idea what they do. Some are ones that I've set myself. But the important thing to remember here is that on your system, you're going to have a set of environment variables. Those environment variables may be used by other applications. So for example, if you set up a database client, very likely it will set some environment variables to tell any user of that client where to access certain files. And in this video, we're going to see how we can access these environment variables and then use them in our program. So in my C program, if I want to see individual environment variables, I'm going to use get env. So if I want to know what home is equal to, I can use get env and then pass the string home to that. If there's one that's not defined, I could try that. We'll see what output we get there. And let's use terminal again too, because we've seen that before. And in fact, why don't we also do user? And let's rearrange these so that they're a little more appealing. So we'll do user then home than undefined. I like that order a little better. It doesn't really matter. That was just personal preference. So again, get env takes a string and that string is the name of the environment variable you want access to. So you'll notice we have an implicit declaration. That's always a bad sign. So even though the code may work with just that warning, there's other errors that'll prevent that. But that warning is definitely a bad one. We definitely want to make sure that we have proper four declarations. Get env is in the standard lib header file. And then on line six, we have another error here. Actually, that would be this line. And it looks like we're missing a closing parentheses in each of these cases. So let's fix that. And that compiled clean. So now we run. And you can see we print the value for each of those environment variables. And notice the undefined one comes out as null. So another way we can get access to the Linux environment in our C program is through the use of an argument to our main method. So if you recall, you can have command line parameters and those come in in this argument vector. And we know how many are in there because there's an argc parameter that gives us the number of arguments we have. And we can also have another array of character pointers called envp. And that's going to give us an array of all the environment variables. Now you'll notice there is no count here. This is going to be a null terminated array of character pointers. Now, of course, you may be thinking, wait, I thought strings were a null terminated character array. Yes, this is a null terminated character pointer array. So when we say that we have a null terminated pointer array, the idea is very similar to what we have with a string. So if you recall, we can have a string and the C string is really just a character array that's null terminated. There's a null at the end. So here you can see we have some environment variables and their values stored as C style strings where we have an array of characters that are null terminated. Now our null terminated character pointer array is going to look something like this, where we have an array of pointers. Each of those pointers points to a string, a C style string to be precise. And at the end of this is a null. So we're going to treat this very similar to how we would work with a string with a pointer. We just have to remember that instead of this being an array of characters, we have an array of character pointers. So we're going to have one additional level of indirection as we work with this. So if we want to see what's in ENVP, this null terminated pointer array, we're going to set up a character double pointer when we'll call it current. And recall, since this is an array of pointers, we need to use a pointer to a character pointer to access the individual pieces with an outside pointer. And so while whatever 
our pointer is pointing to is not equal to null, then we're going to print the string. And again, we have to dereference it to get the character pointer that's held in that index. Then we're going to increment the current pointer. And I think what we have here looks good. Actually, you know what? Let me add just to get a counter of how many things we have. And we'll print that here. So let's run this. Or let's compile it in, rather, I should say. And I didn't add my parameter here. And so you can see we print out all the things that are stored in my environment. And of course, if I was looking for something specific, I could do a string comparison and use that. Like, for example, if I was looking for the path, I could do a string compare on this and the path and print that out. I could also do something like this. If a and v count is greater than five, then I'm going to break. And I don't really need an else case there. What this will do is this will limit the, the output I get. So here I compile and print and notice, whoops, I'm, I'm incrementing this too many times. So I just caught that. And so now you can see that it prints the first six. So we'll say greater than or equal to just so it's a little more clear why we're getting the number of these we get. Now, the thing to keep in mind is if I want to use this particular argument, I'm going to need to go through and look for what I'm what environment variables there. The one thing that's nice is if you're not really sure what they are, or if you're looking for an environment variable that has a certain value, this is a really good way to do it. Obviously for just a single version, using git env is gonna work a lot better for you. And so our last way to access the Linux environment that we're gonna discuss is through the use of the environ global variable. So your program gets one of these for free and to access it, it's not part of your code, so it's an external variable. It's a double pointer, and the name is environ, and it actually works identically to EnVP. In fact, this just gives you access to the environ global variable. So we can actually take the code we did here, and we'll just reset all of our variables. We'll set current equal to environ. Actually, we'll initialize that. I think everything else will keep the same. And we'll still just print the first five just to keep things manageable. So we compile and we run. And you'll notice environ gives us the exact same output we got through using ENVP. And just like with that one, if we wanted access to any of these values, we would need to do some string comparison and so forth. But those are covered in other videos. So for now, we'll stop and we'll have another video where we talk about how to actually change some of these values if you want. But this should give you an idea of at least how you access those values. And one thing that's nice is, is you can put things in the environment that you can use to interact with your environment through your C program. So for example, if you want to have certain directories or file names or that sort of thing, you can put those in the environment and then your C program can have access to those.